Okay, we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of MovieCast. I am once again your host, Dana, and I am joined by a couple of very special people. Once again, joining me is the always uh, talented Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. Hello, Mr. Bailey. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Dana. And it's good to know and hear that I am a special person because I don't consider myself that 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 uh, special. <laughs> always special. You will be special to me always in my eye. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> also joining me is Mr. Tony Palanco. <laughs> What's going on, people? Uh, thank you for having me as a guest. This should be, to quote Richard, very interesting. This is going to be fun. <laughs> also, jo- also joining us from uh, the the wonderful Russell Cast. He's he's been a guest on Russell Cast. He is the the wonderful citizen of Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Mister <laughs> Mister Michael. <laughs> What's good? Thank you, uh, Dana and Richard Bailey, for having me on here again. It's uh, great to be on here. And let's let's get let's get down to the business and you know have some fun. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And let me just say one last thing. You also forgot to mention Dana. This is the guy that tried to end Roman Reigns' life as well. So we're gonna have to put him on blast uh, the next time that we do WrestleCast for that. <laughs> Sounds like fun. So why don't we, have, why don't we ever have Tony on your, your wrestle cast? Because I don't watch wrestling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he, he literally watches nothing, as I learned today. Damn, he watches nothing. I don't watch anything, man. <laughs> watches <laughs> not, nothing. Not, so you're lying. You watch yeah. you watch video games played. Oh yeah, well yeah, I play them. Right you now, know? <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so starting off, we have a little bit of the uh, DC is going to do their very own big time crossover every year. They have a huge crossover episode with all of their shows. This one is going to be the CW Crisis on Infinite Earth. Mm-hmm. What is happening this time is that we're going to invite all of the shows. And it was just that just announced, but it was announced Many people are very happy that usually every year, you know, you have your Supergirl, you have your Flash, you have your Arrow, you have your Arrow. But this time, finally joining us, finally, will be Black Lightning. Mm -hmm. Is an amazing show that everyone should watch if they have not started watching already. But uh, basically what has been announced is that the star, Mr. Black Lightning himself, Cress Williams, will appear in Crisis. And this is a really huge deal. There's nothing that's yet known about how big the role will be. Hopefully he will not be stuck to just like a little cameo appearance. Um, Sometimes. But this will hopefully be a a big one. He will be joined by Thunder and Lightning. Those who have not watched the show is basically his family. If you haven't watched the show, Black Lightning is essentially the Incredibles with black people. And it's incredible takes place in Atlanta and you know so Atlanta Atlanta <laughs> darn right well it, now that I've heard that information I'm even more embarrassed that I haven't been watching the show since I live in Atlanta so <laughs> so I don't know if it will feature the entire family but it will finally feature Black Lightning which you know many times before especially last year they kept saying that Black Lightning he belongs in his you know he's his own little universe he's not going to interact with any of the other uh, superheroes, but now they finally changed that because one, he's really popular and they ex- expect this to be a huge, huge show. So this is everything that we know so far, especially with the characters that are confirmed to be on the crossover episode. Um, it is considered to be, like they do every year, the biggest crossover CW has ever seen. Um, it will basically involve the entire scope of and like I said, the Flash, DC Legend of Tomorrow, Supergirl, and this time Batwoman. Um, there's been a lot of rumors that have been going around, a lot of confusion that's kind of been going around. But what we do know is that it's going to run for five episodes over December and in January. Uh, right now, what we do know is that Brandon Roth, Superman, he is going to be in it. So as we know before, Brandon Roth is already a part of the cast when he plays Ray Palmer and Adam in DC Legends of Tomorrow. He is taking on a second role where he will play Clark Kent Superman. So 
he famously played uh, the Man of Steel in the Superman Returns movies, which he thought was going to be a big franchise hit. And he planned on doing that for the next 10 years. But in reality, that ended up being a one-off and it failed terribly. Oh. It, it fizzled hard. Sorry for that. <laughs> it fizzled bad. I still to this day have not seen it in its entirety, which is kind of sad, but yeah, it fizzled. I'll be, like, um, I'll be like, you ain't missing much, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. But what we do know is that he will not be wearing the Superman Returns costume. However, he will be a <laughs> version of the Superman suit from Kingdom Come, which is by Alex Roth and Mark Wade. So. Okay. Which news also is that Kevin Conroy who is a star of Batman animated series and all of its 15 billion spinoffs, he will join the cast and it's going to be in a role that many people are going to assume, Bruce Wayne, Batman. Now the actor has been voicing the Dark Knight for like, what, over 25 years by now, maybe? Yeah, since 1992, basically. Jesus. So having him is going to be incredible and he will be playing an aged version of the Dark Knight. And it will probably an homage to his role on Batman Beyond. Hmm. Yeah, I remember that. That's kind of cool, yeah, actually. Cool. I really love that series. Oh, Bird Ward, who was originally the uh, 1966 Batman TV series, he is going to be reprising his role as well. It didn't the go the. the the assumption is that he's reprising his role. In reality, nobody is really saying anything, but if you have Kevin Conroy, maybe it would be safe to assume that he will be playing Robin. Play Robin? Um, most likely will just be a cameo, but the fact that he was even cast was a great thing. Um, fan of, he's still a huge fan of Batman. Um, about a couple of years ago, he did the Batman versus Two-Face animated movie, which I was able to interview him for. So he is very happy to be a part of anything that involves Batman. And he loves all of the, the new iterations for it. So that should be something to look forward to as well. So they're basically bringing back Patch to Batman. It'd be nice if Julie Newmar was there. She played, what was it, Catwoman, I'm going to say? in the 1966 version. Um, so also we have LaMonica Garrett. He will reprise his role as the monitor, originated in Elseworlds, which was the crossover from last season, up in the Arrowverse finales. And this one, he's gonna be obviously playing a very significant role in the season as well. We're also gonna have the anti-monitor. So Garrett will also be playing the anti-monitor who is essentially the evil twin brother of the monitor. So also we will have um, Tom Cavanaugh, who's played 15,000 roles on The Flash. He's gonna be playing uh, Pariah. Um, this one, they, they didn't exactly say how this is gonna be involved, but basically Pariah, who in the comics is an arrogant scientist, who's kind of, he's like accidentally kind of responsible for feeding the anti-monitor and allowing him to go on his rampage in the multi-universe. And along the way, he was shunted from Earth to Earth, landing on one just before it was destroyed and forced to watch it die. So that's kind of all that was released about him. So we don't really know. Also there will be is that um, Tyler Holchin, who uh, played Superman in the Supergirl series, Mm -hmm. um, he is also reprising his role in Crisis. He's going to be reprising his role also in um, On Infinite Earth, along with the other Superman. So it's going to be different Supermans because everyone is coming from a different Earth. Pretty interesting as well. We also do know that Lois Lane is going to be in it. Um, that's going to be played by Bitsy Tulosh. So she's going to be in it as well. I have the also a big one is going to be Batwoman. I know many people are excited for Batwoman. I can hear the excitement in the air. 
<laughs> I'm interested in watching it. So much excitement for Ruby Rose. Yeah, I, 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 actually, I, I actually am also interested in watching it, although I feel like the trailer that I saw already gave me an idea of what to expect for the entire season. So, mm-hmm. we'll I watched the uh, last season's crossover event and where she was in uh, that one episode, I think it was Supergirl and Flash, and it, it wasn't bad. She, she did a pretty good job as in goes Batwoman. Yeah, she wasn't bad. I'm like, said, I'm, we'll see what she does in our own show. Yeah, so much excitement. Mm-hmm. So, they will be obviously Supergirl. Be the entire Team Flash, which includes Cisco because I know there was a huge rumor that he was leaving the show. But apparently he is not, since he is still in the Flash. And obviously, we will have Arrow, which is going to be their last season. So it's going to basically be like a big send off for yeah. Arrow. And uh, uh huh. As I was say, and uh, we're talking about Crisis uh, Infinite. Tom Welling has been teasing that he might be repri- reprising a role. Right. Oh. And if you don't know who Tom Welling is, then you don't really know your. Superhero movie or TV oh, shows? TV shows, yeah. TV shows. He played. Uh, he played uh, Superman or AKA Clark Smart Kent. Girl. He he was Clark Kent. He was in Superman. Let's just be real. Well, in Superman the end, he was in the last in the second. Yeah, the last yeah, second. Yeah. Last second, he was Superman. Yeah. But yeah, still, he was Clark. He was Clark Kent. I called him Superman or Superboy, whatever you want to call him, because I mean, yeah, he was Clark Kent with superpowers. Did him? They did him dirty. But you know, he was in there for like one whole second. You saw the cape fly by. I've always said that I'd love to see. I would love to see him, you know, reprise a role as Superman in one of the movies. Because I thought he did, you know, a good job. Uh, oh, I think he did, and he did, he still looks good. So you know, he can put it on. And he's been teasing, like you did say, he's been teasing it for a while, and I don't mm-hmm. see why not. And also, who's been teasing his role is the guy who played Lex Luthor. Yes. Who was that? And um, Michael Hill. Rosenbaum, right? Yeah, yes. Michael Rosenbaum. He said he was you know, probably going to, you know, make an appearance in in the crisis. And as we already know, John Cryer plays Lex, Lex Luthor in Supergirl Dude, version. That is like oh, super yeah. cringy. I don't know if you're what I don't know if you watched it in Supergirl. He, he was like super cringy. Yeah, wow. it. I mean, yeah. They knew I'm what like, they were dude. getting. They, they they obviously were watching Two and a Half Men, and they decided that's what I would want to play this role. So they knew what they were getting. Well, it's interesting about him because they got him because he was playing Lex Luthor's um, nephew in the Superman movies, uh, oh. Superman 4 to be specific. That's why they got him. Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, he was Lex Luthor's, uh, you know, um, his nephew. So they're like, hey, you should play Lex Luthor, you know? I don't know, man. Literally the, that, that was literally the reasoning behind it. <laughs> I didn't know that. See? You, I didn't know that. See, you know more than I, than I know, though, Tony. Yeah. Tony, in here with that inside knowledge. Well, I, I'm just old enough to know this shit, man. <laughs> You're not. Look, I'm older than you. Yeah, We've that already is true. discussed this. <laughs> You're still just young and I'm, I'm, oh, I'm older than you in spirit, though, man. Like I said, you're you're young and still wet behind the ears. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just want to say something real quick. She's going chocolate. Yeah. No, I was going to say like th- this is my theory about what they're going to do because um, and I'm just basing it off the the original comics. Who knows if they're even going to do this? Uh, the whole reason the original comics happened is because DC Comics at the time, then you know, 1985, they had too many multiverses going on. It was too confusing. People didn't know what the hell was going on. I suspect this is going to do the same service. It's going to clean up the entire universe, put it into one. Because right now, Supergirl. It's in her own little universe, right? I um, I don't know if Black Lightning is too, but I know Supergirl is in her own universe. Every time they have a com- you know, a crossover, they need to go through this whole do- mm-hmm. thing of like crossing over. So I suspect when this is over, they're all going to be in the same universe. Like the main characters that are going to live. Because, you know, there's, think about it. Let's just be real. Kevin Conroy is going to die. Uh, Brandon Ralph Superman is probably going to die. A bunch of these characters are going to die just like they did in the, uh, in the comics and stuff. So I suspect they're going to consolidate this so Supergirl is constantly in that universe you know i could be wrong but that's what i think is going on here but that's what they do actually you're right because that's what they do in the tv show she, yeah. when she uh she, when she goes to the flash she has to go like through this portal whatever that the flash makes yeah so now they're going to get rid of all that she's just constantly there you know superman is a part of the the you know the at the flash universe and our universe and all that other stuff that's what i suspect is going on here and, and also the big thing is is that um arrow the guy who plays arrow it's completely escaping my brain 
but he, he's you know basically going to be even yes, Mel, yeah. to be like the I guess you would consider the the Tony Stark of the group, and of course end up sacrificing himself. So yeah, that's also that. the big theory. People are kind of really excited for it. It's not been announced, but there has been speculation that Psycho Pirate will make an appearance. He was also huge in the comics, yeah, as well. And also, there's going to be um, there's also another rumor that the Flash of Earth ninety will kind of well, and it, there'll also probably be a lot of dead characters that will just different Earths, so. That should be exciting overall. So we, we got a lot to see with that. Is looking forward. He's he's very he's on a very professional location shoot, as Michael pointed out. So <laughs> kind of moving on, we have a bit of a casting news that I know that I can pretty much assure everyone in here plays video games. Yeah, I don't. And Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Have video games where you're at? Whoa, excuse me? Oh, you oh, see no. me? <laughs> nah. Sure, do you have video games? Nah, I got video games. I got like the whole. Mike has all the games. Game. I got the PS4, the Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and the PS4 Pro. Uh, PS4 Pro? Yeah, I know. A lot of people ask me, why do you have two PS4s? I, I just do. I don't know. I need. I, I need to. I need to uh, start making the type of money that Michael makes. He's buying PS4 <laughs> Pros and Xbox One X, PC, all, all of these platforms. Yes. Yeah. And like we were talking today on the platform podcast, speculation that they're saying the consoles are going to be one thousand to thirteen hundred dollars with the parts that's going inside these uh new consoles. I'm like, and they're asking me like. You gonna buy it, Mike? I said, hell yeah, I'll buy it. Day one, especially the PS4. I mean, the, the PlayStation. Oh, yeah. I said, uh, he goes, why? He goes, like, because all the exclusives, man. I said, you can't play all these exclusives, you know, that's on PC or Xbox. I said, they, I said they've been nothing to put out, you know, fantastic games. PlayStation has. Absolutely. Edge people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so, people. wait, moving on. <laughs> Moving on, uh, Mortal Kombat, a little bit of while now, it's going to be um, produced. It's basically the reboot, and they said it's going to be very gory. It's going to be a hard R. It's going to be very similar to the video game, so yay for that. So they have announced... I'm looking forward to that, too, because I do love the 1990s version, but there's something about something that, you know, correctly... Associated with, yeah, I love the you know the first one, Mortal Kombat one, the first movie, the '90s version. Annihilation yeah. was trash, though. It's exactly, I was oh, gonna say, hey. Annihilation was yeah. a dumpster fire, garbage. Uh, so, so, was, uh, yeah, it, yeah, go ahead. It, 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 is it fair to say that that name dictated what the film would become? You said Annihilation. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, it, it, it was. It, it got annihilated. It did. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it was bad as you know Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh God! See, Terry's seen that movie. He's I like, remember, "Oh God!" Yeah, I remember that <laughs> bullshit. I went and saw that movie. You know, day one, I was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "This, this is bad." <laughs> oh yeah, this is bad. It's it, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> this one, the, the the they try they're they're promising that you're not going to get a Super Mario's type version with the uh, Mortal Kombat film. They will have full fatalities. It will be very gory. Hard R. James Wan is producing. And they now, just started, yeah. When you say hard R, what do you mean by hard R? <laughs> like not hard going rated to be R? A, a, a rated R, it's not okay. porn. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't say, I didn't yeah, say uh, anything uh, about uh, porn there, Dana. It sounds, like, it, sounds like, it sounds like Michael is still thinking about what happened with Ricochet. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. That's what he's Ooh. Feeling on the booty. <laughs> See? Tony, Tony's lost on that one. He doesn't know anything about what happened behind closed scenes with Ricochet. I don't know what the hell that you're talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. Right, yeah, you, definitely, you definitely don't want to know. I, have to I don't want to know. It's, it's, it's finger popping. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he said, hmm. 
So <laughs> for for this movie, they have cast uh, Makai Brooks, who will play Jackson Jax Briggs. Um, from Thor Ragnarok, they cast to do I cannot pronounce this name to do boo Asiano, the power of thunder as Raiden. Yay. And we have newcomer CC Stringer who will be playing Melina. Oh. Yeah. I didn't even know it was gonna be in the movie. Well well, well, but, well, uh, well now yeah. I can now I can confirm that Gary will see it since that is his favorite Mortal Kombat character. He kept complaining because she was not in the most recent game. So he's definitely gonna see this movie now by virtue of that news. <laughs> And uh, Ludi Lin, who yep. was in Power Rangers, is going to be Luke Han. Ah. And will be joined by Joe Talisman, who was assigned to play Sub Zero. Okay. There's no plot for the movie, but I am going to assume, since we're getting all kinds of fatalities, that a tournament will be involved. We're getting a couple gods. Tons of blood, and do not bring your children unless you want them to be serial killers. Because <laughs> you know, <laughs> video games and movies are you know are violent. Yeah, the that's violence. that's true. Yeah, that will yeah. So you know, lock up the guns. Exactly. But if you you got your guns locked up, uh, Mortal Kombat will hit theaters on March fifth. So take your vitamins and pray you're still alive by then. Mm. Should. But um. Yes. So moving on from that, um, and um, you know how we have like a resurgence of a lot of superhero movies. We have, of course, obviously Marvel to thank for that. DC movies, all of these, the boys or the sorry, the good boys. No, nope, the boys. <laughs> I was right the first time. Sorry. So the Amazons, the boys, and there's a lot of superhero movies that's you know coming out. Kevin Hart has decided wants to be a part of a superhero movie too and this one is is going to be it's an average movie about you know the guy meets the girl he falls in love with a girl okay you know very typical it's time to meet the family and you know you're nervous you you're, you don't want to meet dad you don't know how my dad is going to come across if he's going to kill you what hit what you know girlfriend's mom is gonna think of you so you know you prepare yourself and you get really excited for the night well it turns out that his girlfriend her of a superhero called night wolf it's huh. going to be about this man who meets his future father-in-law for the first time and discovering that his secret identity is a superhero and how he has to grasp with that idea it was a pitch that was you know submitted to kevin hart still he fell in love with it and he has a desire to be in a superhero movie but luckily nobody will cast him in a superhero movie so he's like let me jump on this one okay. so he is very excited for that um hart fan but good for him making his money you know everyone's in the superhero business so why not? I, I just, I just want to say I find it very funny how the previous topic you were talking about Mortal Kombat. There actually is a character in that game called Night Wolf. So I hope that uh, they don't say, hey, wait, wait a second, that name sounds similar, and we don't see a, a lawsuit uh, in the future behind this. <laughs> Gosh, no, 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 no. I, I, no, I, I hope not. <laughs> would be funny if that you know they go finish him and he's like that at the end of the movie but no um that would be cute though no oh, but that would it, overall it seems like a really interesting cute little movie all right yeah yeah so moving on we have a yeah oh no i said i agree yeah so moving on, we have um, Disney's D23 is around the corner. It is um, from August 23rd to the 27th. Many people are excited for it. I know you are excited for it, Lee oh, Jr. Yeah. Absolutely. And a little bit of details have kind of dropped from 
expect. There's a lot of things of what we don't know what we can expect. Obviously, there's going to be a mention of the Phase 4, maybe some Phase 5. Remember, we have Blade, um, Fantastic Four that's coming out, the X-Men that uh, will eventually be here, hopefully, before we're all, like, 50 years <laughs> old. There's been a lot of different kind of speculation, but one of the things that they did say is that they're bringing back a lot of TV shows to their streaming services, and this should be kind of good. This is that Tommy Davidson announced that we we're getting a proud family, uh, the TV show they're bringing it back. Those who don't know, this was like one of the, not, I'm not going to say one of the first, but firstness. Mm -hmm. um, black family animated television show that aired on Disney um, back in the early 2000s. Family and just some, you know, their, their interactions. Grandma was always obsessed with this man who was like this Latino lover who couldn't stand her and was always speaking about her behind her back in Spanish. Uh, you, Kyla Pratt starred in it and was the father. You had um, Paula J. Parker was a mom. So they're bringing back that TV show. And those who watched it back in the day are very happy. Hopefully those who have never heard of it, they can find a new audience for it. And the reason why they brought it back is because Disney is basically saying that they want to have a lot of more diversity on their shows and that they feel that, you know, it's time now Proud Family for its time was a huge revolutionary show where we just didn't see a lot of African-American animated families and mom and dad was in the family, you know, everyone being together. Um, it ran for 52 episodes, so it did pretty well. It was from 2001 to 2005. And anybody who has cable um, or access to a streaming service, it is available on the Disney Channel on demand. So you can look at that. That's, that's a huge thing that they're they're adding and they want that diverse family on there. Another part of diversity is that we're going to get a lot of LGBTQ plus shows. And one of the shows that we are getting is the Love, Simon. Only the the Disney it was it wasn't it was Disney. It was um originally the TV. It was originally. Sorry, I am stumbling. It was originally a book that they ended up making into a movie. It was about a 17 year old named Simon um, Spear, gay. And he had a, he didn't know exactly how to come out with his family. And also on top of that, he decided to hide his identity um, on a message board. It was like a school message board to kind of be him his true self. And he ended up connecting with another student. And it kind of helped him to come out and be the person who he was really meant to be. And as a result of that, it was became very, very popular. I mean, it grossed in the US alone was like over $66 million, this huge fan base behind it. So just Disney has decided that it was gonna turn it into a TV show. And what we're getting is not the extension of the Love, Simon, the character, but what we are going to have is the Love, Simon universe. So it was based on a high school. Everyone went to that high school and it's going to be about other students in that universe who went to that high school and they just cast their lead michael simon one of the students in love in the love simon high school and him coming out with his parents and and basically his home life he is going to be a hispanic kid this time so that's kind of cool diversity there and basically it follows victor who is a new student at, like I said, the Creek, the Creekwood High School on his own journey of self-discovery, facing challenges at home, adjusting to a new city, struggling with a sexual orientation, and just basically what it's like to be a teenager. The actor who played Simon in the movie is going to narrate. So it's gonna be a little bit of mixture of both, but we're not getting the exact characters that we got from watched the movie and he loved it. Oh, that should be fun for anybody who is a, a fan of. So, yeah, a, a, a quick question. This is not going to continue 
the movie then. This is just a totally oh, different uh, It's scenario. a different student. Okay. Different student and his life. Okay. Yay. Sounds good. So, uh-huh. So, also they dropped that we are getting the Obi-Wan Kenobi for for Disney Plus <clears throat> and that it will star um Ewan McGregor. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll star him. Hmm. Um I know many people are excited for that. I'm slightly confused about that. I'm doing what? I know that there's a lot of yeah. Wait, what's confusing about it? That's it's, it's, no, many people just don't know what's going to happen. They don't know if it's gonna be like a own series. This was a continuation of they don't know what's going on. And they didn't really release that much information behind it. Gotcha. Yeah, because the thing is, like, because, you know, obviously everybody knows Ewan McGregor played Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan still had many years between the end of um, episode three and episode four, right? I think it was like 30 years uh, time span. Uh, yes. So there's a lot of stories you could cover in that time span. So it kind of makes sense. But the way I see this, and this is me being cynical as fuck right now, but I'm keeping it real. I think, you know, this is just trying to do anything it possibly can to get people to buy this service. You know what I'm saying? So like, oh, we got to get you and McGregor back, you know, and, you know, I, I can't speak for you and McGregor's current situation, but I'm pretty sure maybe my man needed some money and shit is like, you know, let, listen, I'll do this thing for you, man. Just give me some money and I'll be on your TV show, even though I'm a big movie star. Um, but so, but yeah, it's, but, but you know, the point is, you know, just being honest right now, uh, you could definitely ring a lot of stories into it. But like you said, we don't know if there's going to be a movie. We don't know if there's going to be a TV series, but there are definitely, uh, Obi-Wan stories to tell. So it, it makes sense like for financially, you know, to like you get, you get Obi-Wan, you know, cause obviously Alec Guinness isn't around anymore, so you can't get him, uh, but you get the younger Obi-Wan, you play him and you know, it, it should, it should bring a lot of people over for sure. Just for the curiosity of it, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm definitely interested when they announced it. I, I'm definitely uh, want to see it. I'm definitely probably going to get the the Disney Plus streaming service bundle that they are talking about and showed. That I think it was like for eleven bucks, you get Hulu plus Disney and plus e ESPN. Yeah, that's a that's a steal. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I I just want to say I I definitely agree with everything that both Tony and Mike said. But I, I, but, I, but I want to stress this point. I don't want Disney to just completely run the Star Wars franchise into the ground. Because I saw I all of these other movies they did in the past. Mm -hmm. The uh, the Han Solo movie, which I think was just complete trash. It was. Um, so I, I'm totally fine with them taking the approach of doing these shows. But uh, let's just make it only with the interesting characters. We don't need to see a show for every single Star Wars uh, character or creature, in my opinion. But this one, I definitely will watch because I'm genuinely, genuinely interested in the character and what happened. Happen. Well, I think they even said that. I think they even said after uh, episode nine that they were going to take a small break yeah. from the Star Wars movies. They were going to like you know take a three, maybe five five year break. Before they put on another That's Star good. Wars they need to do that because the pff, man, Star Wars movies have been so bad lately. They do exactly. That. I say, a lot of people, <laughs> you know? the, the fan base on Star Wars movies been, you know, in between. Wait, 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 hold right. on, wait, hold yeah. on a second. Well, hold on a second. I thought everybody in here agreed they're going to go see that new Star Wars movie in December. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm going to go definitely going to see it. I'm, I'm going to see it just to finish off the trilogy. But after that, me personally, I'm done with Star Wars until they get new people to run that shit. Like I'm done. They're running it to the ground. It's horrible what they're doing to that I mean, franchise. Yes. Absolutely. Episode eight. I, I, I mean, I left the movie theater on episode eight. I was kind of a little triggered. I'm like, eh, why did why did why did you do uh, my boy, you know, Luke Skywalker that way? I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm not even getting into that, man. Exactly. So me and Tony had to talk about that, bro. Like, mm. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Exactly. It's, it's whatever. <laughs> So this is this is going to be a huge big blockbuster because I know for all of their Marvel TV shows the budget is around 150 million, and so for this I can easily see it being around that same maybe 200 million for the show. So they did not release any details aside from solo TV show and other. I know more plans, more information will be dropped during the um, D23 Expo. I'm curious, but 
not excited to see what's, what's going on. And after a while, it just seems like they're just trying to for just get everyone's money. Yep, exactly. That, it, it really does feel like that. Like, I know it sounds kind of fucked up and cynical to say it, but it just feels like it's all a big cash grab. Like, all this stuff's like low key and all this stuff. Like, who cares? You know, <laughs> maybe I'm just speaking for myself here, but I'm like, I'm looking at all these shows. I'm like, I'm like, I don't need to see any of this stuff, you know? But, you know, I, maybe I'm not the tar- target audience. I'm not sure, but they're definitely doing a big push for that that app. Mm-hmm. Uh, they definitely want to challenge Netflix. That's for sure, you know? Oh, yeah. Or Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> It's been trying its best, and they're hiring a lot of in-house writers, but they I, they just can't compete. Yeah. With this, I just don't see it working out. It's just this is so sad. I, when I saw them, you know, announce this deal and everything, I was like, man, they're they're reaching deep in uh, Netflix's pockets over here. Like, jingle jingle, we're coming for you. I'm like, <laughs> I'm more concerned about Amazon. Sorry. I wonder if Amazon will will be able to. So Netflix have, seems okay, but Amazon. I, I had Amazon Prime, and like I said, I I canceled it because I just had it for the movies or the TV show, and then Netflix outdid Amazon Prime hands down. I mean, and the only reason I want Amazon, Amazon, Amazon Prime right, right now, now is to watch The Boys, that superhero, superhero. TV show. No. Well, nah, so that's nah. just yeah. that's just one of the things that I'm slightly about Amazon making it. Then that's like they'll be okay. We'll see. We'll see, indeed. Yeah, well, Amazon itself will be fine, obviously. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I what you're saying, but it's just funny because I have Amazon Prime for the deals and stuff, and mm-hmm. tw- this has happened twice. Amazon sent me physical letters in the mail. Begging me to watch their shit because I never <laughs> watch it. It's hilarious. So I was like, hey, like, yeah, they're like us. Uh, like, uh, Tony, were you aware that you we have hundreds of st- uh, movies you could stream? Like, why don't you give it a shot? I'm like, I do know about it. I don't care. <laughs> Let me get free shipping. That's why I'm signing up to this shit. You know. Hey, like aside from like, I can see Joe. You're right. Like, I do know, and I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Like, listen, just give, me, just give me a discount, give me free shipping, and I'm good. That's all I care about here. Come on now. Aside from like, they, their 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 most watched show was The Boys, which if you yeah. haven't seen it, you need to watch it. Yeah, okay. I can't. I, I I I can't wait for you to see that show, Tony. Because oh yeah, I'm watching. Yeah, I, I promise, Dane, I'm gonna watch it. So I definitely will. You know. Promise me. <laughs> On my deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to watch it. But yeah, no. Aside from that, no one's gonna tune in to go see the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What? Honest, no one even knows what that is. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, I have never know. heard of that. <laughs> wait, wait. I do, I do know that show. The actress that was in the actress that was in House of Cards, right? Probably. Yeah, I, I've never yeah, watched yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, the one, the one that got killed. So yeah, that, that's why. But, uh, All died in House of Cards. <laughs> <You> see. <laughs> 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 so also we have coming um, around the corner. Like I said, D twenty three. Marvel has announced that there are there's going to be a lot of Marvel television, as we know already from the series. Like they like before, like we said, um the. the the Winter Soldier one is getting Bucky Barnes and it's called uh, uh, Falcon and Bucky and Bucky, you know, that show, uh, WandaVision, all these other shows that we're getting. So they also did announce that what we're getting is going to be more crossover episodes. So those who watch Marvel's Runaways, which I made it through one season, that was that was it. And Cloak and Dagger, which is on Freeform, they're going to have a crossover crossover episode that they've kind of been working on since the first season. What we're also getting from that is a live action series that they announced: Ghost Rider and Helmstorm. Helmstorm. Oh, oh my fucking god! <laughs> that's that's what I was telling you. I was like, yeah. Uh, we are getting the animated series Hit Monkey. Uh, um, Hit Monkey. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's 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 one of those stupid like side comics they had, man. Uh, okay, I take your word, Tony. Agra and Dazzler. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how's this? 
We all know this one. It's going to be an R rated. It's going on Hulu because Disney, they want it to be a bit more, you know, for the kids and nice. So it's going to go on Hulu. It, animated version of Howard the Duck. Interesting. So right, wait, for that. You said, you said R rated. That's interesting. You said, you said R rated. Uh, R rated. Like R. Okay. Singing everything. <laughs> so I, I want to see, I, I wanna wanna see how, how, how Disney, how, how, how uh, R rated Disney's going to get. But yeah, I, this sounds excellent. Continue. Yeah, let's just be honest, man. In this day and age, R rating is a little bit suspect. You know, as we'll talk about <laughs> later on, you know. Ten <laughs> years ago, this would have been fucking brilliant. Howard the Duck, House of the Turtle, they would get. Nowadays, everybody's trying to play it safe. I don't know about that. But it should be interesting, you know. At least they're trying something new. Because yeah. uh, I heard that they were going to try to, you know, turn Deadpool into PG-13. Yeah. They want to uh, step away from the, the rated R. That absolutely better not happen. I mean, I, I mean, I saw that Deadpool PG thirteen. Uh, I cuts. yeah, I saw that too. I was I, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I just think that it suits the character better to be R rated, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the, you know. Like, Disney is in control of that now. So, and uh, another rumor on since we're talking about Disney movies, and since we know that Disney owns Fox, rumor is they're going to reboot Die Hard. <laughs> the long man. Come on, son. Oh man, I I, I, I knew that. Drinking time. He's like, no. Nah, I'm don't, getting don't, tired don't, of this don't, shit. Watch the old don't, movie. Don't mess with my Bruce. That's don't what mess I'm saying. Bruce Willis. He says. Yeah. Yo, I saw. I by the way, I saw a Die Hard. Um, you know, for the first time in theaters uh, last yes. year. You know, oh my god, dude. Oh, still lives up to its name. It really does. Like, leave that shit alone, man. Leave yeah, that shit like, alone, I, please. I was like, come on, Disney. You don't need to. That's the, you know, Die Hard. I, I doubt it because I do know that there was the, the uh, Die Hard prequel and Disney said, oh, heck no. And well, they axed it. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's a good thing. I yes. don't know whether or not it's going to be rebooted. Stop remaking p things, people. Stop it. You know, <laughs> Disney, stop remaking shit in general, man. All these fucking movies. And then you idiots out there are pay for this shit. You know, <laughs> look how much money the Lion King made. Like, no, don't give that stuff your money. Uh, I'll, I'll stop I, right now. I didn't go see Lion <laughs> King. Go ahead, preach, Tony. I didn't go see Lion King. I was like, nah, I'm good. There, there, there's already a Lion King. Go watch that instead, man. Exactly. They got animation instead of the CG nonsense, man. Real animation. Exactly. Anyway, go on. Well, well hold on. I, 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 I just want to say, uh, man, I'm, I'm very disappointed to hear this because I thought that my, Michael and Tony, I thought you guys wanted to continue the circle of life. <laughs> Rich man, nah, son. Man, Rich, I'll go to Boston right now, man. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> stop going to those movies, people. Stop. Exactly. Stop giving them your money. That's why they keep making them. Exactly. I mean, we're fixing to get a little mermaid live action. <sighs> I'm not. I'm not. I'll, don't watch and, these movies. Watch the originals, man. And uh, I know they talked about they're going to do a uh, the little blue alien dude. I can't think of his name right now. Um, um, Lilo, yeah, Lilo. Lilo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Lilo and Stitch. So they're doing live action of Lilo and Stitch. I'm like, come on. You guys are reaching Disney. And then, and Hybrid. people. Are still, oh, yeah. And ahead. we're getting a Latin sequel. Ugh. Oh, Aladdin. In the talks, it's in the talks that a Latin oh. sequel. Well, well, hold on. A and second. that'll be brand new property, and we'll focus on the genie. Yeah. I was okay. Gonna, I, 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 I was gonna ask, how the hell can you have a sequel from from a Latin? I mean, because we did have Jafar. I mean, they had the like, three animated movies for a lot. Three animated movies and a, a and series. And a series, yeah. And a video game. I didn't know they had three animated movies, though. I only know about uh, the original one. Straight there to was video, a lot, baby. Yeah. Straight there to video. A lot. Uh, yeah, there was a Okay, okay. Wow. Yeah, there was, there was straight to video, but yeah, there was Aladdin, Aladdin 2, and I think some Jafar was the third one. Well, I, I, well, I, I have to give uh, Will Smith props. He, he can go get his money as Genie once again. But man, that's I did not expect to hear that news today. That's absolutely uh, <laughs> very disappointing to hear that news, Dana. But, but, but at least we're not getting Ghost Rider live action. Yay. <sighs> Uh -huh. Br yeah, bring back Nicolas Cage, right? Just go. Oh, we're not crazy. getting that. <laughs> Nicholas, Nicholas is. He needs help. Yes. He needs help. <laughs> Face off. Face off, too. You know, treasure, and I'll be happy. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Mm, no, mm, Michael, you got uh, Die Hard. Uh, I get National nah, Treasure. Uh, that's a mm for me. I didn't. I didn't like the first one. That was just a uh, Indiana Jones knockoff. Yeah, what was wrong with that? I, I mean, I, I'm an old school what Indiana Jones fan. the Explorer. I mean, I. Is, I know. It, it, is, I know. Tony, Tony already told me he bought tickets for that day one. Man, get out of here with that bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. Fuck out of here, Dora. Dora the Explorer. Get out of here, man. <laughs> you and Dana oh. going together? Come on, there. Right. Well, you know, I will go, Dana. <laughs> I'll be getting excited then. He was like, "Yes." Hey, like Dana's going. I'll go now. <laughs> Sign me up. I'll do a double feature. <laughs> I, I always have a lovely time with Dana, so mm -hmm. I will go. Even when we see shitty movies, it's awesome. So <laughs> that's oh, fine. Jupiter is ascending. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we're getting continue their partnership with Marvel, and we are going to get um some Sony animated TV. Yay. And oh. as a result, Spider-Man universe. Okay. That's a plus. Yay. That, I mean, I'm interested. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home did really good. No, I'm, no. What I heard. Oh, uh -oh. yes. It was the, the Sp Spider-Man Far From Home was the, um, it finally grossed $1.1 mm -hmm. Top Bibian. box office hit. Wait, wait, wait. That's awesome. Well, well, M Michael, you, you are aware that the Spider-Man is now a threat to to uh, humanity, right? So you you should not be supporting that character <laughs> moving forward until <laughs> the next Spider-Man movie where he can finally clear his name. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to J. Jonah Jameson, man. There you go. <laughs> yes. So, um, yes. So, also on top of that, Chris Miller, um, who is part of Sony. They are working on a live action TV show based on that Sony has the rights for. So that also includes Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Could get a TV series of Spider-Man. Now is this going to be on like Disney Plus or is this going to be like on This TV? is going to be on, no, this is. Sony Plus. Their goal is, is on Sony Hulu Plus. and <laughs> Sony Plus. Yeah, this is what the fifth um, Spider-Man TV series in the last five years. Like they keep pumping these things out, I man. Do it, I guess. I mean, yeah, people keep watching them. Why not, right? All right. I mean, I would love to see you know like an Incredible Hulk TV show series again. I grew up watching Incredible Hulk. Oh yeah. TV, Captain America on TV. I'm getting that, but the black one. The what? The black, the, the black one. Captain America. Oh, okay. Let's see. I'm down for it. Yeah. Inclusion. <laughs> So, um, we will be getting with, with that. So they're working on a very secret project that they said, and they're going to okay. start pumping out a lot of TV series for the whole Disney Hulu. Look forward to that. Uh, I know Spider Gwen was set to have her own movie. I don't know if that will now be That'd turned be into a TV show, but they're also looking That's for. I've Looking for a spinoff involving the Into the Spider Verse characters, so I would like to see uh, Silk. I know I'm, you know about Silk, don't you, Tony? Silk. Yeah, I don't. I don't care about Silk or Spider Gwen. No, all those Spider new Spider people came up with in the last five years. Don't care about any of them. Grumpy. I'm just being honest. I'm like, man, okay. whatever. Grumpy Grandpa. Spider-Verse. Ooh, damn, Grumpy Grandpa. <laughs> hey, I'm not denying that claim. <laughs> See a movie, darling. All right. So, <laughs> so, yay for that. And then also, Paul Rudd kind of announced um, Ant-Man 3. Yes. I'm down for that. Thumbs up. So we got something, something everyone's happy about, except for Tony. Once no, I, 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 I like Ant-Man. I'm down with that. That's the only good thing I like from all this, to be honest. I mean, so I mean, there you go. I mean, we, 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 we have to be honest. Uh, you know, there would not be an Avengers uh, endgame without Ant-Man since uh, 
He played a very important role in that movie. So, um, actually, technically, there would not be an end game without the rat, if you know what I'm talking about. Shout out to the rat. Without him, the whole plot would not yeah. work, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to rat number 57, <laughs> you know, <laughs> great actor, man. Great actor, man. He's been hustling, you know, been hustling. <laughs> like, listen, we need you for a special role, man. You're going to walk over that button and you're going to bring Ant-Man back, son. Mm-hmm. He's like, word, all right, you my money. And then uh, we got Endgame. That's right. He should get an Oscar, the rat should. Yeah. I bet the rat is fucking CG. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway. uh, moving on, yes, moving on. We have Loki, the TV show that will be released spring 2021. A couple details was announced from that. The showrunners will be uh, from Mick, from Rick and Morty. That TV show. The humor of that show. Yay. <laughs> we will also be getting the Loki version will be the 2012 version. So remember in the in game movie which i'm sure everyone saw mm-hmm. remember when when it went back in time to 2012 when they was getting the tesseract mm-hmm. that loki had and then loki re the, the 2012 loki the tesseract and kind of just disappeared yeah take place literally seconds after that loki escaped with the tesseract and so this will be the Loki that has kind of not faced justice for any of his misdeeds. Uh-oh. So he's still a butthole. Cool, I'm down for that. He can travel all around the universe. Time, would, and his goal is to alter major world events in the history. So when they released kind of that very blurry picture of Loki for the, the series, it showed him in New York City, USA, in the 1970s, and it was during the release of Jaws, <laughs> was the billboard for Jaws. So basically, he will just start changing events that's happened in history, and he will face villains that he's never encountered before. Yeah. So that is pretty awesome. We will be getting six episodes. It will cost $150 million to make. So we are getting a very. Whoa. I can imagine. Episodes. We are probably not getting a second season because it's one hundred and fifty million dollars <laughs> to make. <laughs> and, and, we'll and, see. And, and, and just just to clarify, all of these Marvel shows, the the the, the these the, all this stuff is not starting until next year, right? Well, this is in twenty twenty one, so uh, okay. a year and a half in the spring. Okay. So, yeah, so I think they're supposed to start filming Loki this October. Oh, you're right. They're, they're, they're starting the filming Loki very soon. Um, the only one that is scheduled to drop on its release date is um, Lady and the Tramp. Oh, yeah. Live action <laughs> I mean, version of Lady and the Tramp, which looks no. like. Yay. Don't tell me. I can't wait to see that spaghetti scene. That infamous it's spaghetti the, scene. <laughs> it's so sad. It. Like, Ugh. no, it's just, it's really sad looking because you have the dogs, like, you know how pretty and cute dogs could be. Both of the dogs kind of look like they're the tramp. Oh, oh whoa, whoa. Ouch. And that they've been tricking on Skid Row. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, of the lovers, but it is the saddest kind of lady in the tramp that I've seen. And it's, but it's going to star Tessa Thompson. Oh, there you go. There you go. So you, she's making her money. Good for her. But coins. it will, it will <laughs> get the coins or the dog biscuits. <laughs> but it, it will start Tessa Thompson as Lady, Justin Theroux, and the whole thing will be real dogs. It will also feature voice talents of Janelle Monae as Peg, Sam Elliott, who has the greatest voice ever. If you have not seen, yeah, mm-hmm. that movie. So he will be playing. He'll probably be the uh, the old dog. Sam Elliott will be. He's 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 trusty. So. Yeah, rusty. Benedict Wong is also in it. He'll play Bull. Ashley Jensen is going to play a gender bent version of Jack. So. Uh oh, gender bent version. Yeah. Mm. Version of Jack. Um, <laughs> okay. mm. Interesting. When it comes to the humans, uh, we will also get we will get Yvette Nicole Brown, who is a comedian in someone show. Oh. 
Yeah, that name sounds familiar. Community. So, oh, yeah, okay. All right. Mm-hmm. We'll play Aunt Sarah. But, you know, this, it's, it's, uh, it's just the thing is, is that it's just, they think it's got like the saddest dogs they could find. And it's not, it, I dropped it so you could see the image. It's just not. Who's, uh, okay. pl- did you say who's playing the tramp or voice the tramp? The, the tramp will be, um, Tessa Thompson. Well, no, tramp is Justin Thoreau. Lady is Tessa Thompson. Justin Thoreau. He sounds familiar. Yeah, he does sound familiar. Um, Justin Thoreau is a big, he, he was, a um, what you call it? Um, Justin Thoreau was basically, he is, um, He's the guy who is was supposed to be married to Jennifer Aniston. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know who that is. <laughs> He's in Zoolander as DJ Evil. Okay. Tropic Thunder. <laughs> he executive produced and wrote Tropic Thunder. Oh, okay. He was in Iron Man 2. He wrote Iron Man 2. Oh, okay. <laughs> see? Iron Man 2. Let's see. See, Iron Man 2 is a to me. I can't. He was Dropkick. He was the voice of Dropkick in Bumblebee. I don't know who that is. Well, I know. Oh I, 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 I know. I know. I know, I know Bumblebee. But I know Dropkick. Yeah. I don't know who that was. This is so sad. <laughs> You're like, I don't know who these people. Are. Yeah, I thought you were talking about Justin Trudeau, the Canadian Prime Minister. That's what I thought <laughs> yeah. you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, and the Canadian Prime Minister. He's dropped yeah. out of politics, and now he's going to uh, start voicing dogs. Which you guys can see in the yeah. in the in the chat how how they look. At least they're real dogs. I thought it was gonna be CG dogs like like they did with the Lion King should, and stuff. No, they should have been, but they're gonna be they're gonna be real dogs, kind of similar to have you does anyone remember the movie Homeward Bound? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's a classic. Uh oh. Uh oh, silence. D- dramatic yeah, pause. D- dramatic pause effect. Dana, I think we lost Dana. By the way, Richard, I'm going to take this opportunity. Uh, do you see the volume levels going down? Burning yes. on OBS? Yes. Okay, good. good. Ooh, man, that would have been bad. We're doing this shit for like two hours. You know, <laughs> oh, oh, no. It's definitely going. It's definitely going. It's definitely working. Yes. Yeah. Who else yeah. is in the docket for D23? Well, I think, I think that was. Uh... Looking at the list, I think that's the majority of everything that um, was going to be mentioned about D23. Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think some something's going on with uh, Dana on her side. Uh-oh. Maybe she, maybe Wait, she get stuck in that thunderstorm. Oh, shit. Well, there's no thunder right now, man. Everything's it's, good. It's, 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 it's no thunderstorm. There, 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 there she goes. There she goes. She's back. Welcome like back. Piece back again <laughs> so that's that's what we're getting so yay so moving on from that we have seen some movies i think richard and i and, and tony has seen movies michael they don't have movie theaters where he lives okay. oh, <laughs> whoa whoa no, wow. no movies in pencil tucky michael got thrown under the bus do they have buses down there or is it just like trucks oh, you guys drive man. Yeah. damn, damn. Yeah, we don't have buses here. We don't have public transportation. Yeah, they go around on horses and mules and Damn shit. Damn right. You know? <laughs> the old town road came from. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I know that Richard, Tony, and I have seen a movie called Good Boys, not to be mistaken for the boys. <laughs> and not to be uh, mistaken for hazards. Yeah, not to be mistaken for Bad Boys. Totally different movie. That's right, yes. We're getting a sequel from. Yay. That's right. Can't wait for that sequel. Right. I'm definitely going to see it. 2020. Yeah, all right. Yay. So that should, yeah. So basically, Good Boys, it is very, it's basically super bad for, for little kids, for like 10 year olds. Um, what you have is their three best friends. And they are now going to be in the sixth grade. And 
it's basically about these three best friends and how as they're getting older, you know, they have to get ready for certain things like the kissing party. And back then, kissing party, I didn't know they still had this, was simply spin the bottle. You know, you spin the bottle and you kiss the person. And the, my version was like the seven seconds of heaven or whatever. You go in the closet and for seven mm -hmm. seconds, yeah, yeah. you're supposed to, to, to kiss. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's very innocent type of thing. It's exploring who you are. And with this one, it's with three kids, very adorable, who is played by Jacob Trimley, who was the little boy from The Room, Keith L. Williams, and Bradley Noon. Each kid has their own personality. For example, Keith L. Williams, who is the black one, he is kind of like the very sensitive, super honest he doesn't tell a lie, and but he wants to be bad. And then there is Jacob Trimley, who plays Max. He's a hormonal middle schooler. Um, while his family is on a business trip, he's you know he has to protect the house and not touch the drone. He ends up really liking this girl. He kissed this girl, and he his goal is to go out with the girl and be boyfriend and girlfriend. That's his goal. And then he also has a best friend, who he loves to sing. He wants to join the school musical and, you know, just really cute little kid stuff. And they always like to bond together over playing this, you know, a, what is it, like a rare card game that's kind of similar yeah, to Dungeons yeah. and Dragons? Yeah, Magic the Gathering, I believe it was. Um, the Gathering. Yeah. But chaos kind of ends up ensuing. Max ends up taking out his father's drone, ends up... In, a, in the hands of someone else. Kids are trying to become their own person and you know they, they start fighting, a lot of infighting with each other. They wanna become, a, they wanna view themselves as being adults and doing adult things, but they're still children and they have no idea what it is they're doing. So I know Tony and Richard has seen this movie Art, by your opinion of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I, I went into it, you know, after finding out what the hell the movie was actually about. I thought it was going to be kind of like a like a throwback to like the 80s um, kid movies and stuff. Um, raunchier than that, but at the same time, you could tell they were holding back a lot of jokes and stuff. Or like they could have, like I, I told you this day after we saw it, like I believe if this movie's made 10, 15 years ago, they would have pushed the jokes a lot harder. Like the only reason this movie's uh, rated R is because they say fuck a lot. <laughs> Other than that, like, it's literally the whole word is just that the whole script is just that. Yeah, there, there's you know there's no real violence, there's no nudity. Like the, the most titty you see is like a a doll's titty, you know, like a like oh, a real doll. doll. A lot um, of but, semen. Yeah, but um, I, I the kids were fun. They they were good, you know, because mo usually in movies kids are like the worst thing. Um, the kids were good. They were pretty funny. Um, they, they were a little too naive. Now here's the thing. Okay, now I'm just thinking about myself when I was 12 years old in in 1992, right? I knew way more than these kids and I didn't even, the internet did not even exist. So I'm like, how are you 12 years old in this modern age? And you don't know half the stuff these kids didn't know, you know, it was kind of interesting, but you, you know, you kind of just suspend that because the, the ride is just so funny, you know? Um, and they're also trying to like, you know, um, I'm not to spoil anything, but yeah, there, there, there's these uh, older girls. They, it's funny because these teenage girls, they call them old girls, like the fucking viejas and shit, you know, uh, that's old women for you non-Hispanic users. Why did I say that? Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I, I like the movie. I kind of like the fact that um, it, it, there wasn't really a story to the movie. It, things just kept happening. You know what I'm saying? Uh, things just one thing led to another, led to another, and led to another. So it was always unpredictable. You didn't know what's going on. Then at the end, um, you know, everything kind of gets you know wrapped up all together, which I thought was pretty well done. And it was interesting because at the end of it, you really see. Because to me, I'm just thinking like, look, it's just some goofy kids movie. They're doing a bunch of random stuff. But at the end of it, you see it's really more like a coming of age story. But it's like a coming of age story before you actually come of age. Usually coming of age is you become an adult. This is them becoming teenagers and kind of growing apart and shit, um, which is kind of kind of interesting. Because, yeah, like you said, you have the the main kid. All he wants to do is, uh, you know, he wants to, you know, kiss this girl. Uh, the black kid, he, his whole thing is like he likes order. He, he likes, um, you know, like. You know, he says he's like, I like order. I like discipline. I, I, you know, all that other stuff. And you'll see where he ends up at the end. And then the other kid, he just wanted to, um, you know, fucking sing. But he, you know, because people were making fun of him. You know, he he was like, oh, I don't want to do that. But but the way they wrapped it all up at the end was, was kind of cool. And yeah, it was a good movie. I, I still think they played it too safe for my um, taste. I think, 
you know, just, just be honest. This day and age, you can't push shit anymore. You can't. You have to hold back, or you're gonna offend somebody. But uh -oh. I, but even with that said, they still did push it just a little bit more than I expected. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's the only negative I can say about this movie. Like, I just wish it would have been made around when Super Bad came out. Then you would have seen some crazy ass shit. Oh. Um, you know. But it was a good movie. It, it, it was a very enjoyable. So that that's my uh, review on it. Junior. Yeah. So uh, I went in to see. You know, I believe uh, Dana, you you and Tony saw the movie before I did. Uh, I went to go see it uh, Thursday night when it hit the theaters. Um, and of course, going into the movie, you know, as I have said on this show multiple times, you know, I I am a, 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 a AMC A lister, so I go to a lot of movies. But the issue with that is that, obviously, there is always the previews before the movie. When I saw the preview of this movie, I thought, oh, this, this looks funny as hell. When I see the actual movie, it was funny, but literally almost most of the jokes are in that trailer. So, you know, it didn't have the same effect when I saw it. I did laugh, of course, but not as hard as I laughed when I actually saw the trailer. So that's, one, that's the only one criticism that I have, is that, you know, whenever a movie is made... I understand the directors have to put out a trailer and show various scenes, but I would try to say, please try to save some really, really fun stuff for the actual movie itself. Um, that's my only criticism. As far as the movie is concerned, yeah, I enjoyed it. You know, I, I agree with a lot of what Tony had to say. Yes, it is a coming of, of age story before the kids actually came of age. I really like how they put them all going through these particular changes in the actual storyline and how, you know, we had the main character who all he wanted to do was to get to that party and kiss this girl who he's, who he thought that's going to be my future wife. And then you saw what happened in the movie. Uh, unfortunately that, that did not turn out, um, the way that he would have hoped. Um, but again, he, he just kept moving on, moving on and they all moved on. And, you know, I can definitely relate to a lot of the stuff that they dealt with because I did deal with some stuff as a kid as well, you know, the whole peer pressure situation of, well, I need to just be myself and not try to conform to what others want me to become. I felt that is exactly what the one character dealt with, where he didn't want to sing because he was worried about how other people would look at him. But when he really got to the to the heart of the matter, he thought, yes, I do love to do this. And he embraced it and did it. So that so I feel like there was a lot of great messages in the movie. I do agree with what Tony had to said. Uh, they I do wish they would have pushed the envelope a little bit further, but with that said, I don't really, I don't know if I can really tell you how I think they could have pushed it further along. Uh, I don't know if it would have meant showing more stuff that they shouldn't show or stuff like that, but um, overall, I still thought it was a fun movie. It was a hell of a good time, and I was very surprised to see the amount of people that were at this movie when I went to go see it. You know, various types of people who I wouldn't even think would even be into this type of film. Everybody was there. So it was a nice little fun experience at the theater. This is a movie that is um, kind of in the same realm as Superbad, and it has the exact same people who did Superbad. The thing about it is that a lot has changed within the last 10 years uh -oh. that you can't exactly do anymore. So the movie itself harpered heavily on consent. Mm-hmm. I have permission to kiss you. Can I hold your hand? You know, I don't want to assault you. <laughs> kind of ask permission. That was kind of the thing that was really updated. So you're not going to get the same jokes that you would and say knocked up were bad or any of the other movies that preceded super bad. I, in, that is kind of an adjustment, especially when you've been raised on movies it's like just friends oh yeah for example you you, you can't have um thing anymore because you know people are this is a different time so for the kid who was since who wanted who just wanted to be sung who just wanted to sing back in my day they would have used an expletive to to describe him yeah. and they don't do that or they kind of like make fun of him and call him another name. That's that's not what they would call when I was a kid, but it was like a very lighter term. Um, 
he had, there was also alcohol in the movie, but it was little sips. Nobody was getting completely, was literally sips. And one of the things that they called him was sippy cup. Yep. That is, you know, something I, well, I would have never experienced during the, the movies that I've watched because, you know, it's just a different time. So I think that they did a really good job creating a movie for this time period. Mm-hmm. He would have loved to see, and we have seen much more, go down in these type of movies for this generation i think they did just good enough they did they did it well movie for this time period and the boobs that we did see again were oh and it was a lot of less sexual jokes and it was kids who you know they was around 10 and they thought they knew what sex was but they they didn't know at all (laughs) Adorable in that aspect. I, 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 know, I thought it worked. I just I, I, I just have to say this. Um, to, to quote uh, Dave Chappelle, except for I'm going to alter it. I guess that Molly is a hell of a drug because yeah. I've, never, I've never heard of somebody spending damn near five, six hundred dollars just to get their hands on some uh, some pills. So, yeah, I must have been some pills. Yeah. Two. Two, by the way. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but going back to what you're saying, I, I completely agree with um what you said, you know, about um how you can't get away with some of that stuff. And you know, and again, I'm just being honest, I kind of feel that's a unfortunate, but this is also why I'm like, eh, I'll just watch the older stuff if that's what I want, you know. <laughs> but, but but you're right yeah. though. Yeah, but you're but you're right though, for what they like let me I'm just trying to phrase this correctly. For what you can get away with now, they did do a very good job. For what you can do, they definitely did a very good job. Because it was still funny. It was still a funny movie. It's still you know? funny. There's a lot has changed. I know we had the conversation where I watched just Friends. <laughs> this is rough. In this time period, it was really rough. So, yeah. You read about what? It was a lot of more. Yeah, it was a lot of acceptance for who yeah. you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. That, that Yeah, you're right. That main singing kid, he would have been called something else entirely. A three-letter word back in the day. <laughs> oh, whoa, you know? whoa, whoa. But yeah, we're not gonna, we're not. Have. Yeah, we're not going to say it, obviously, but you know what he would have been called, oh, even if he, oh, no. you know, yeah. yeah but, um, but I, 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 yeah, it was good. It was good. Absolutely. Well, I, I adored it. So, um, I also was able to see Hair Love. It was a very, it's a short feature. It came, Birds Two. It's by Sony Animation. This has been. Uh, a project that's been in creation for many years. It was also a book. It's inspired by who are trying to do their daughter's hair and kind of that that bonding experience. It is the most adorable animated. It's very beautifully animated, but it is very simply a girl. You watch a lot of YouTube tutorial videos. She's trying to just do her hair. Black people it is a very long process to do our hair and it's just fluffy white and we, we can't exactly go and uh step out the shower with it so with us a lot of creams and moisturizers and and different kind of lotions and so she tries her best to to do her hair by watching this tutorial and it's just not working so she kind of enlists her father to do it and it is a hot mess because he's like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And he's trying to learn just as the daughter is about them doing the hair and it coming out right. It's about that they share with each other by just something simple as let's, can you just do my hair? You know, comb it out and look, make it look really nice and really pretty. We end up finding out that the girl who is kind of obsessed with this tutorial it's her mother that's doing the tutorial and her mother and lost all of her hair. Result, it's kind of saying, you know, cherish what you have, whether it's long, beautiful hair, whether it's kinky hair, or if you're completely bald headed, the purpose of it is to just find something that you can bond together with, be a family. And it was the most adorable the best short of the year. Like, I really wish that it, it's nominated for something just because it's that beautiful of a short. 
So I was able to see that. Um, like I said, it's partnered along with Angry Birds 2. So if you get to see Angry Birds 2, 4. So I suggest it. It's, a, again, a really great... Uh, I was able to see Angry Birds 2 on top of that. Now, those who, you know, see the direct sequel to Angry Birds 1 video game, so don't shoot up anybody. But with this one, it's, we knew from the, from the first movie that the pigs and the birds are constantly at war with each other after Piggy Island was destroyed. And so they continued that war, kind of like, no more, but they are able to rebuild. And as a result, they still mess with each other and they're still kind of fighting, but it's more like a playful fight instead of that pure violent one that we've known before. However, what ends up happening is there is a third island that they didn't know that exists, which is Eagle Island. This is all based on a video game, so it's just kind of sound a little bit familiar. So um, Eagle Island, which is basically their way of, there is by ice balls, and they decide to completely destroy um, the Piggy Island. Well, the pigs and the birds from the Angry Birds have to kind of have a truce with each other and to fight whatever kind of species is at Eagle Island, which ends up being, a, you know, an eagle. Dun, dun, dun. They end up teaming together. It ends up being uh, Exeta, who is the leader of the Eagle Island. She's basically, the reason why she's attacking everybody is because she's jealous. And she's angry that the other islands are basically a tropical island. Well, her island is basic, is just like Antarctic. It's freezing, it's cold, everyone's miserable, and all they have is just ice to survive on. They're not able to sit with the sand in their toes and, you know, the sun up above. So she's kind of angry about that. So the other birds from Bird Island and the pigs kind of join together in order to stop her from completely decimating everyone's home. So you kind of end up with that dynamic and they recruit other birds and other pigs to stop Zeta in her tracks. There ends up being a plot, a love story, kind of like a, a love gone wrong story bit stretched out and way too convoluted on top of that there is a hatchling story now if you ever watch the like the animated shorts the hatchlings are just the little tiny baby birds birds are they're playing hide and seek one day and then they kind of get bored with that so they decide that they want to play a pretend game and with the pretend game, they're using their baby sister's eggs. So they're still in eggs and they're gonna pretend that they're rocks. However, the eggs end up drifting out to sea and the hatchlings have to kind of spend the whole time rescuing, rescuing their baby sisters who are in egg form. So it becomes like this weird three movie in one. It's, it ends up flowing together in the end, but it just, it seems like the movie itself was just an excuse to give us a hatchling story. I didn't mind the sequel. It really wasn't bad. It was kind of much better than the original, but I would felt that it would have been much better if they just focused on one storyline instead of a love story rescuing the island and then also these baby birds trying to save their their eggs but overall i felt that it was it was decent i kind of liked it i wouldn't say run out to the theater right away but if you have a nice matinee and you have a bunch of kids go and see it uh oh there you go it wasn't bad matinee, matinee. yeah can't matinee. complain about that matinee you know? and, and and kids so yeah you need to have kids a kid. movie yeah, the kids. I don't are know like anyone. It. You know, the kids are like it. I don't know, like grown people. It's like you know, forty-five. We're gonna go see the Angry Birds. <laughs> Some birds, you know. You know, so it was really cute. Awesome. I thought it was adorable. Ooh. That about wraps up everything. Unless you guys have anything else you want to say about this week's news and, and entertainment. I don't got nothing. 
that you did you did a pretty good job rounding up. There was a lot of stuff that happened this week. It's pretty pretty incredible. And it sounds like a lot, a lot of more of stuff, stuff is going to be coming. Yeah, you know, a lot more stuff coming down the line too. Absolutely. Yeah, we we do have um, D twenty three. I know yeah. Richard is very excited about. Oh yeah. We'll learn more about Phase. What are we four and five of uh, Marvel? Oh yeah, Panther uh, and X Men and Fantastic Four. Let's let's hope it is. Let's hope it's Fantastic Four and not Flocktastic. Oh. Uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> so that last yeah. Fantastic Four was, uh, was dead in the water to me. Yes. And Fantastic, you guys, you know you loved it. Yeah, Fantastic. Bullshit, man. That's oh what that gosh. Was. Yeah, that was fun. But yeah, that seems to be everything. So, any final words from you guys? Awesome Actually, show. Yeah, actually, yeah. No, I just want to thank you for having me on. Um, excuse my ignorance of most of these topics, but Whoa. you know, I enjoy being with you guys. You know, you guys are all my friends. It's good to see Richard again. He's been missing for about five and a half years, yes. so it's always good seeing him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and yeah, man, go out there and watch movies and TV shows like I don't. <laughs> In my life, who is this man? <laughs> yes. Uh... Uh, I would like to say it's good to be back. Uh, don't worry, there's there there are many more things coming back. I'm not the only thing coming back. You know, Gary, and I, Gary and I have been talking that there's quite a bit of things in the works. So stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you for having me on again, Dana. And and I, and I also want to uh, let you know that I am very much looking forward to you talking about your experience with power the next time around because I believe you're going to that yes. event next week. It's Monday and Tuesday. I will be interviewing all of 50 Cent and his people. <laughs> what? Yeah, Power. Uh, you know, the Power TV show. Yeah, 50 don't, Cent. I don't watch it. It's like, watch no, it. black people. I don't watch this. We don't have this. No, no, no. I want to say now. What are black people? Oh, don't put oh. words in this man's mouth. <laughs> exactly. And, and, Mike, to be fair, I never even heard a show unless I, until I saw it on the coalition. I'm like, I'm not with this shit. I mean, I've heard the show. I just never watched it. I know Powers. That show was trash. Oh yeah. Uh huh. So a lot of people, you know, watch Powers. I'm like, eh. read read the comics, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, any guys going to Gamescon? No. Uh, or I wish. To, uh, or I wish. To, I don't got. I ain't got that kind of, man. I I I, 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 I will tell you. I will tell you this. Uh, I received a ton of emails about a, a ton of things that were happening in Gamescon and people asking yes. me. So that made me feel even, even worse that I'm not going because <laughs> I, 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 I want to tell them. You guys yes. want to cover any of it? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try to cover what I can cover. Um, but we definitely are going to be doing some discussions on what happens. Uh, okay. I, I do know some things that are going to be spoken about there. I guess we'll talk about that off air. But uh, yeah. Well, I guess I should say this j just to plug my stuff because um, uh, in the first week of September, this first week of September, Throwdown and Throwdown Your Questions will be celebrating. Uh, each one will be celebrating 250 episodes, people. Uh, so, so come check that out. Uh, we'll, we'll be on Wednesday, September. That's Throwdown 250. And then on the Sunday, you know, that same Sunday, we're going to have throw around your questions and we're going to try to get some special guests uh see uh who could rope in there and what's cool about that is th that this will be our fifth year anniversary of being with the coalition too which is really cool you know so th definitely uh something worth celebrating there yes nice that's awesome coalition's awesome. that means four is coming up for me yeah there oh, you yes, go yes we need to we need to we need to do something about that some, some celebration four what about you michael anything you want to plug uh, the platform podcast make us make sure you go check us out uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern on youtube.com slash the platform live Ooh. Damn. yeah we're a, we're a awesome bunch of people over there we've had Tony on here a couple times yeah man good stuff you guys are hilarious <laughs> cracking me the fuck up man <laughs> and Mike they always giving you shit bro what's up oh, with they that, do. man? they do <laughs> they do I'm like the comedian over there. They like they like to torment on me. And yeah, Mike, you're also the community manager for Dual Shockers, right? Yes, I am. I'm the mm -hmm. one of the community managers over at Dual Shockers as well. Mm. But hey, we're not supposed to talk about that. Oh, 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 oh. That's what Dennis oh, oh. says. 
Hey, I love your doctors, man. Don't say nothing. <laughs> no, they're good people over there. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's the, new, it's, the, it's the new face of dual soccer. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Go check them out, say man. That. We will they got check Dominicans. Yeah, they got Dominicans over there, man. Shout out to Joel, man. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, man. I, yeah, hey, listen, those are my people, man. That's all I'm saying. Yep. Yes. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, when uh, I got hired on, there, that was the first thing they said. Do you know Tony Plonka? I was like, Yeah, I know Tony. I said, He's good people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ew. Yes. That sounds awesome. Well, thank you once again. We'll be back next week. Yes. And everything that happened at D twenty three and and Power because we're we're gonna film everything that's going on at Power. That should be fun. Yeah. The big, mm-hmm. the big, the big, the big rich town. Yes. <laughs> I'll be stuck in Madison Square Garden for like 12, 15 hours. Oh, God. Nice. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Once again. Peace. Peace.